G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy for a slightly late edition of Just The Tips. I do apologize, I uh, had to go somewhere and uh, I'm just getting it a day later. So we are here to unpack the upcoming round 17, but first let's go through how round 16 went. This was a bad round for me in terms of tipping and in terms of being an Eagles fan. Uh, so I correctly tipped the Lions to beat the Ds to start the round, and then I got the Dogs right, and then I got four wrong in a row. Fremantle upset Sydney. I tipped the Pies over the Suns. I tipped the Giants against the Crows. The Giants have really let me down in recent weeks. Uh, Essendon, I tipped to beat the Cats. I really think they should have won that game, and they fell short uh, by a long way in the end. Uh, Port Adelaide, I got that right. Carlton, I got right, and then I stupidly changed my tip to West Coast. Uh, out of blind faith, I didn't really think they were going to win. I thought they were a good chance, but they were nowhere near it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I'm not going to reflect on that any more than I have to. So let's go through the uh, weekly winners of all our competitions. So we have our member tipping competition and the winner this week was Rotowash. I think for not for the first time, Rotowash has gotten seven correct tips with a margin of 10. In our overall tipping competition, we have Case and P with a correct uh, nine correct tips. That's outstanding. I think there was a couple of people who did that and a margin of five was enough to claim top spot. The leader of the members tipping competition is Real Swift with 94, once again, claiming a strong lead there. And the general tipping leader is Chase Costa for at least the second week in a row. Well done, Chase, with 98. And our fantasy competition leader is, once again, Tully Griffiths with a fantastic average of 2057. That's outstanding. I had my best uh, week of the year, I think. It's like 22, 30 or something, something real juicy. But well done, Tully. I don't think I'm going to catch you this year. So without further ado, let's get into round 17. All right, we have a potentially really good clash to start off the round with Collingwood taking on Essendon. Both of these sides are in the top six. Essendon a fourth, Collingwood six. Both of these sides lost last week. Collingwood, uh, as I just said, lost to the Gold Coast Suns. Pretty good effort. Nobody's beaten the Suns at, at that ground this year. I should have tipped the Suns. They just don't lose at home this year, apparently. And Collingwood fell short. But still, nothing to be really concerned about. By contrast, I was a little bit more disappointed with Essendon. You know, it was a good test to play the Cats, a team that is... Kind of notorious for beating up on Essendon, and Essendon have been a good team this year, and they fell seven or eight goals short, so that's disappointing. But making this a little bit more juicy is the fact that these guys drew the last time they met at Anzac Day in a fantastic clash. What are the form lines like at the moment? I don't think Essendon's been bad. I just think they're coming off a bad loss. You know, I'd say that the Cats' loss might be the worst loss of the season. There hasn't been too many, to be honest. Like n nothing too horrendous up to this point. But I was a little disappointed with that. And Collingwood will be a tough game for them. However, we know that they play well against them. I think I'm going to just going to go with Collingwood here, though. Um, Essendon could absolutely win, and I think it will be a thriller. But I do just trust Collingwood a little bit more. Essendon fans are going to hate that. They are. But uh, considering last week's form, I'll go the Pies by seven points, though. I think it'll be close. North Melbourne versus Gold Coast at Marvel. Now, this, this is actually really tough because there's a few different narratives happening. You've got North Melbourne in improved form, like pretty good against the Bulldogs last week. You've also got the fact that they beat them last year, admittedly in Tasmania, in the final game of the round. So they, they know how to play the Gold Coast Suns to some extent, even though it was last year. Equally, the Gold Coast Suns, while they're a very good team on their day, are particularly poor away from home and uh, are yet to claim four points away from home. This is their best opportunity um, you know, until they play West Coast later this year. So I'm actually not really convinced either way. I think North Melbourne's form has been really compelling, and I'm not completely convinced Gold Coast are just going to fall to shit, um, you know, just because it's away from home. I think they've been, you know, nowhere near their best form when they're away. But at Marvel, I don't think they're necessarily super weak. I mean, they nearly beat St Kilda there. It was a pretty rubbish game, to be honest. Oh, this is a tough one. I think I might have to... I think I might have to back in North here, but more the most compelling part is not not the Gold Coast away form, it's it's North Melbourne's recent form, and they've gotten close to some really good sides. Obviously, claimed one win uh, in Perth, and then against better opposition, got close to winning uh, Collingwood, the Demons, and then most recently the Bulldogs are in some decent form. So I think I have to respect that. I think North Melbourne will see this as gettable for all the right reasons, and I'm going to say North Melbourne win this, but close in a close game by nine points. Port Adelaide versus the Western Bulldogs. Interesting, two inconsistent teams. Port Adelaide coming off a tough win away from home. A good win, you know, it wasn't a great game, but it was it was a good win for the club. Nonetheless, it keeps them in touch with the top four somehow. That's how, you know, even this competition is right now. So Port Adelaide coming off a win, but still the body of work in over recent weeks has not been very convincing. And the Bulldogs, most recent win was against the plucky North Melbourne, and around that, their form has been good. I mean, 
it was only a couple of weeks ago, they slaughtered a Fremantle side that then just went and beat Sydney in Sydney. Um, and I think they don't have any fears about playing the power at Adelaide Oval. I think back to that prelim final. We are massively removed from that now. But either way, I don't think this dog side is poor on the road. Um, you know, they've won oh, at least one game away from Victoria this year against GWS off the top of my head. There may be more. There may be more. This will be tricky. I actually think the dogs are in better form at the moment. And I feel more confident about them. Port Adelaide could, could flick the switch. Like, they're, they're in a slump, and surely that's ending soon. They did have the win. It wasn't convincing. I'm going to tip the doggies here by 17 points, and that will really ramp up the pressure on Hinkley. But I really do think I could get this wrong. Who knows? Geelong versus the Hawks at GMHBA. Wow, what was the last time this happened? Actually, let's look it up. The last time they played was actually in 2020, so that wasn't that long ago. I don't remember that game particularly. Uh, other than that, you have to go down while well, they played in Tasmania in 2007. Uh, there's a bit of, okay, skilled stadium here, 2006. Hawthorne actually won that game. So I wouldn't read anything into that, but just an interesting little quirk of the fixture there. Uh, Geelong versus Hawthorne. Two good sides, sort of. It's, it's messy. Look at that ladder. Like, you look at the form of these two sides and you think Hawthorne is by far the better side in form at the moment. Bearing in mind Geelong has just snap back into a bit of a better run of form with a big win over Essendon. Hawthorne haven't really put a foot wrong since around five or something ridiculous. And, you know, we're far too good for a very sloppy West Coast on the weekend. One blip in their last seven against the Power late. They should have won that game. So there's, there's a really good body of work that this Hawthorne side is actually good. And this is a tough game. And without an exposed you know, sample size of how they play at GMHBA, that part's a little bit hard to read because we know the Cats have a good home ground advantage, even if they've lost a fair few games there over the last couple of years. Oh, I could see it going either way, but I think I'm going to tip the form side and tip the Hawks by 18 points. This will be big. If they beat them at GMHBA, this is a big rivalry naturally, um, but it will really legitimize Hawthorne even further. And I'm going to say Hawthorne by, yeah, three goals. Next, we have the Giants versus Carlton. Should be a good game on, in theory. Uh, you know, when you consider strength of team and both both of these sides got very close to playing each other in a grand final last year. Uh, looking at the latter, though, that reflects the form at the moment. Carlton are the second best team in the comp and GWS have plummeted to 11th, at least on this live ladder that I'm doing here. So this game probably isn't as juicy as I'd once hoped and the Giants have routinely disappointed me since the first month of the season, just about. It's a little bit of mayonnaise on that, but I really thought we'd see a little bit more from them. And, um, you know, I tipped them to beat the Swans, stupidly, and they didn't really get that close, and then lost to Adelaide in Adelaide last week. Carlton, by contrast, were challenged by a plucky Richmond side and then sort of ran away with the game and, you know, looking like a very strong team. Now, these two sides have met earlier this year. Carlton won that game, and I believe, going to the head-to-head -head here, Carlton also oh, lost to them at the end of last year. That's right. That was the final round of the year. But I think before that, Carlton beat them in that game where I feel like Kerno kicked five behinds or five goals or something. I don't know. There's something to do with Kerno in that game. Uh, but Carlton won it. So, you know, as far as form lines go at certain grounds, there's no real reason to doubt Carlton here. The only thing stopping Carlton winning this game is if GWS snapped back into the form that they look like they had in the first month of the season. I'm liking that term, snap back at the moment. Um, and I'm not going to bet on that. So long story short, Carlton, who have a very strong 22, when so many different elements to that team, and now it's a Coning playing well, I think Carlton should win this by four goals. Fremantle versus Richmond at Optus Stadium. Fremantle coming off one of the more stunning results of the season. Not super stunning to me, because I, if you recall last week, I did say there was a decent chance. I wasn't brave enough to tip it, so I won't take credit. But I do think Fremantle have this ability to beat good teams away from home. But unfortunately, with that comes some inconsistency when they have expectation too. Uh, but nonetheless, give them credit for a fantastic win. And they're third currently on the ladder, and that's reflective of the form. Uh, they've been very, very good. And then they take on Richmond, who is, of course, a side that is... Well, as I currently look at the ladder, the bottom of the ladder, wow, if North Melbourne beat Gold Coast. So we could have a different 18th place side this weekend. Either way, I've been impressed with Richmond's spirits. I don't think they are a pushover. I mean, there will be some games where they are, but for the most part, they have been competitive. And even if the margin blew out last week, I think, you know, I, I'd give them some credit for how they've handled adversity this year. And that therefore... I'll give them a chance to show some spunk in this game and make it close. And we do know if, if, if I was to try and talk this game up as, you know, someone who was promoting it, I would highlight Fremantle's 
a propensity to lose games they shouldn't after big games that they've won. But I think Fremantle deserve the credit 100%. I don't really have too much doubt here that Fremantle isn't going to win. So I'm going to say a 40-point win to the Dockers. And uh, it'll be interesting to see where they finish at the end of the year. They're looking a, a real chance for top four at the moment. Melbourne versus West Coast. A bit of a grand final preview. Wow, look at the live ladder there. Melbourne 13th versus West Coast 16th. Not many would have predicted that at the start of the year. And that's assuming I get my tips right. So the Ds sort of brought an end to a poor run of form against the Lions of the Gabba. That is a tough fixture right now in current form. And considering the Lions had beaten them in Melbourne early this year, I thought Melbourne should take a lot from that performance. Yeah, they fell over at the end, and yeah, it's, their season's kind of cooked, in my opinion, considering their expectation to be really pushing for the top four. I think they're a fair way off that. Nonetheless, if you're just looking at the form line, I thought it was an improved performance, and they'll take something from that. And that's unfortunate for West Coast, who have been, well, other than one game in the last five or six, have really returned to being really poor. And, um, you know, that's just been fun for me as an Eagles fan. I'm hoping it's short-lived. I mean, most teams have had some sort of slump this year other than Sydney. Um, so, like, hopefully we play well. But I think even a version of West Coast that plays well um, probably only gets within four or five goals of Melbourne. And maybe we will have a response. I'm not too sure. I think we're a long way removed from the when West Coast beat Melbourne a couple of months ago, I think that was. I suppose it's not that long ago. But being at the MCG, um, this might be West Coast's first game at this ground uh, this season. Uh, I'm going to say Melbourne by 36 points. Um, That is about as optimistic as I can be right now. Uh, Melbourne are not super convincing, but West Coast are far worse. And then St Kilda versus Sydney at Marvel. It'll be interesting to see how this game plays out. St Kilda obviously just fell narrowly short against the power at Marvel Stadium. Sydney are a much tougher opponent than that. The Swans obviously... You know, a really poor start against Fremantle. Couldn't quite overcome that deficit and eventually lost the game by one point. I don't know if either side has moved the needle enough for me to really t- talk this up as a close game. I mean, there's a chance that St Kilda find a way to really drag Sydney down to their level, but Sydney have too many stars. And are they vulnerable? Possibly. But this would be a really stunning upset if St Kilda even got close, to be honest. Um, with all due respect, I think that's fair to say. So... Without too much deliberation on that, I'll say Sydney win this by at least four goals. And then finally, we've got the Brisbane Lions and the Crows at the Gabbo. Interesting one as well, given that both of these sides have drawn with each other earlier this year when the Lions went to Adelaide Oval. Now, Brisbane have looked pretty good in recent weeks, and I think this is a really bad time to get them. Um, They overcame a really strong performance or effort from Melbourne. Um, and that's a really important win and a good win. Um, and generally, you know, they're, they're trending up and looking good. And I think as I look at the ladder here, if they win this game, they could shoot up to fifth, if I'm reading that correctly. So this is a big, big uh, opportunity for Brisbane here to really reassert themselves back in that finals race. And um, by contrast, you know, the Crows, I think, have been languishing a little bit, but were good on the weekend against the Giants. And we'll give them credit for that. This is just a tough opponent at a tough ground. And, you know, I know the Crows nearly beat him the last time, but I think the Lions at the Gabba should win. So I will say 31 points. Why not? That's where the curse is sort of rested. So 31 points. I'd be pretty stunned if Adelaide won. Uh, I'd be impressed. I just think this Lions side right now has got their act together. And this will see them shoot up to fifth spot. I was right with their healthy percentage bumping Essendon down to six. So that is the end of the round 17. As we look at the ladder, Collingwood back in the four if they win. Fremantle stay in third, assuming they win, they should. Geelong back in eighth. Bulldogs up in seventh. I mean, the the narrative on the Bulldogs has shifted around so much over the last couple of months. And if they're in seventh spot, I think they can be happy with that. Melbourne in ninth with a win over West Coast. Hawthorne up to 11th. They're creeping up. They're creeping up without quite getting there. GW, GWS down in 12th. Are you kidding me? Uh, other than that, more or less looks very similar with a new bottom spot. So that, that's something for North fans. If they win, they get off the bottom spot. And that's, um, you know, something to be um, uh, celebrated. Sounds lame, but you know what I mean. Anyway, guys, those are my tips for round 17. Let me know in the comments what you agree with and disagree with. Game of the round, I actually think could be Collingwood and Essendon. I'm going to say that's game of the round. And what would be upset of the round? I don't know if there are genuine upsets. I suppose, you know, I've tipped a couple upsets here in the Bulldogs over Port Adelaide. That's technically an upset looking at what people have tipped on the ESPN. Um, equally, Hawthorne has not been favorably backed at all. So those two kind of count as my upsets of the week. Other than that, that's probably all I got for you. But let me know in the comments if you have different thoughts. And for now, I'll thank you for watching. I'll thank you for being subscribed and I'll see you in the next video.
Cheers.